Hey guys, Joe here. Thanks for checking out another video. I really appreciate it and I started saying extra words. It's like one o'clock in the morning when I'm filming this. This is the third time I've tried, so bear with me. Thank you guys for all the new subscribers and all of you that have been coming back. Yes, growth has slowed down now that we're past the first of the year and YouTube went absolutely bananas with their algorithm and blocking gun channels. For those of you that have come along, greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the shorts and the long form videos because I try to make them both work for separate uh, tastes. So keep coming back for that. For those of you that are commenting on the tattoos, what do you think? It's getting there. Shoulder down now. I just need to get more panels, but I got to let my skin heal because I burned the crap out of it with the wrong lotion and now I have to wait for it to heal. <sighs> Anyways, let's take a look at what's in the box. For those of you that saw the shorts video yesterday or technically in the middle of the night, this is a Polymer 80. I was out with Sam from Middletown Firearms with a couple of guns I got from there, including the Stevens 520 shotgun, which is over there, as well as this Polymer 80. Now, this is not the Polymer 80 from that video. We happened to take in another one, which was a little bit cooler, so I had to pick it up. Let's go ahead and clear it, make sure that it's empty. Mag's already out. I have the mags over here. This is the Polymer 80 PFS 9 in 9mm, so... Very common caliber. This is the Glock 17 Homage, and it is a pretty cool looking gun, and it corrects a lot of issues that I have with Glocks. Number one, Glocks are boring AF. I was going to use the words, but AF. Uh, this makes up for that by having a number one, 1911 grip angle, but number two, much better texturing, higher cut here. This is a little bit. Yeah, who cares about that? It's too wonky. I'm going to get rid of this because I've never seen anybody two-finger up here. Who's going to hold like that? Has a 1913 pick rail, unlike the Glock accessory rail, although I believe Gen 5 has gone to pick rail. Has better slide cuts, better de detail cuts, and I just think overall it's a better looking and feeling handgun. It's a lot of caveats and saying he likes better than Glocks, but you know what? As a man who has Glocks and he has Polymer 80s and he has PSA Daggers, I'm kind of leaning towards this as being one of my favorite designs right now. Has a very nice slide on it, has little mini Cobra cuts in the front, expose a little bit more of the barrel. It's got a small reverse crown in there, which is just kind of cool because it protects the edges if you happen to drop it. Polymer guide rod, don't know how I feel about that. I may think about switching that out in the future. And a little bit of an enhanced beaver tail. You see this on the Palmetto, or yeah, on the PSA dagger as well. A stock lock, you have to add the back straps in order to get a beaver tail. I just like that because it just feels nicer in the hand. I know where my hand is when it's all the way up. You can see it brings you up much more in line with the barrel as well as I'm a 1911 guy at heart, so this feels like a double stack 1911 to me. Very nice. Polymer frame, steel slide, steel barrel, metal sights on this particular version, and I'm not 100% of the price on these, but I do know that at Middletown Firearms, we have a couple of them for like 300 bucks. They are used, but 300 bucks for a Glock Clone is a pretty solid price. PSA daggers are in the same price range, but I'm not sure if they have the full size one or not. Somebody check me in the comments. Uh, the Rock Island STK100 was going to be my Glock 17 size gun. However, I got rid of it because the optics cut was insanely picky. It used the Doctor or the Noblex, and I didn't like that. So I got rid of it and I'm replacing it with this. You'll also notice in the box there is an extra slide and my gold Zev barrel, excuse me, bronze, although it's supposed to be rose gold. You'll also see this son of a gun is extremely dirty. And the reason for that is I was running my Osprey 9 2.0 suppressor on this thing and suppressors are super dirty when they run because it's retaining a lot of the gas inside of it and a lot of it comes back and as you can see, yeah, makes it pretty dirty. The additional slide in here is a aftermarket, I don't know the brand, slide with a ported barrel, which also works with the ported slide. Why would you do something like that? Well, it helps a little bit with recoil management. And before you say, oh, it's not a compensator, 
it's not. It's a ported barrel, but it does help because if you watch animations or even slow motion video of a 9mm, 45, 40 cal, 10 mil, whatever the bigger calibers, you can take your pick, firing is, they will fire the round and the round will leave the end of the barrel and be usually on a 21 foot target at the target before this slide has the time to drop and cycle. So yeah. Be assured that this does actually affect the recoil management. However, I don't care about that barrel because I wanted it for the optics cut and the ability to have this barrel. Now, I will be swapping a few parts over once I finish picking and choosing as well as talking about this particular gun. But let's go ahead and set that in there so you can see it's gray, has a nice cut there. Or excuse me, nice look for the barrel cut on top, kind of like a 34 or 17L. And it has suppressor height sights already, as well as an optics cut that is cut for RMR. A Swamp Fox Justice bolts right to that cut. We'll set that down. That'll go on the gun later. You'll also notice it doesn't have any internals because they are shared with this particular gun. I can swap them out, or actually I have an entire bag of internals that I can put in there. Let's talk about the Polymer 80 a little bit more. Because the Glock patent expired, companies are able to produce their own versions of the Glock. I like the full-size stuff. We did get a Polymer uh, Compact Polymer 80, the 19 size one, but I prefer the 17. Uh, they have really nice design aesthetics on here. I like the cuts here on the slide. I think they look nice. They work really well, and they are just really cool to look at. I wish this was an optics cut slide right out of the box. It's not, but I'll live with that. The polymer feels really good. It doesn't feel like super cheap, although it feels less premium than a real Glock. It is still very high on my uh, thumbs up list. You will see that they cut their own versions of go pedals into here. So yes, if you do hold the gun correctly, you can actually put quite a bit of pressure there in order to do that. I am going to have to practice more with running my finger up here because shooting these guns, I do have a big tendency to ride my slide lock slide release, which prevents them from locking open. This one obviously has no mag in it. Flat face trigger right from Polymer 80, which I believe in my opinion is better than that hinged trigger or articulated trigger from uh, PSA, but I think a third gen like Steel City Arsenal would be a better trigger overall. We'll come back to that. This generous undercut is really nice. It does have a couple of edges here that kind of go up into the mag release area. I wish that was a little more rounded off, but other than that, it feels good. The beaver tail, like I said, gets you really high up on the gun, so that's nice. The plastic guide rod could be an area pardon me of contention in the future but so far it has not bothered me that much i took a version of this gun the same exact gun but not this gun out to the range and shot it suppressed it ran perfect unsuppressed i think it sprung too heavy so i'm gonna have to look into changing that out mag release is decent this has the polymer 80 mags which I'm pretty sure are KCI, and I hate to say that, but maybe it's because they're shorter that they actually function. But yeah, fits better than the Pro Mags, uh, and not quite as good as factory Glocks, but they are drop free, and they're 18 rounds, which is a little bit of a bonus. Excuse me, these are not 18 rounds; these are 17 rounds. Hey, Joe. Yeah, uh, don't film things when you're super tired. Okay. But this is a pretty nice firearm here before we talk about the trigger. Has a standard take up. A lot of striker fire guns, especially these ones that expect, especially, especially these ones that are pre cock striker Glock clones. You have that take up that's a little mushy and then 90 degree break, which I do like. And it has a little bit less mush in that pole than a stock one or a real Glock. Reset is nice and short, and it's back at the wall, so it's not like a false reset. It's literally right there. Nice and short. I like it. The slide lock slide release is a factory unit Glock style one, so it's super thin. It does work when the mag is loaded. And when it isn't, because of the design of the slide, it sits a little bit proud when the slide is open tightens up when the slide is closed, has the exact same extractor set up as a regular Glock 
Oi boy. Actually, it doesn't. So that is different. Pardon me for all the lies I just told every one of you. So that is slightly different from that, but it works just the same. Uh, pick rail is nice. Here's your serial number with a QR code. Funny thing about QR codes, they can expire or be copied by others. Uh, EOTex, old ones like my 512, actually link to Apple's website when you try to scan them. Let's go ahead and pop the top off, take a look at it, and then maybe pop that one on there. So safety check your gun. Always safety check your gun because if you don't, you could wind up, well, you know, discharging into yourself, your friend, or other parts of your house. One thing you'll notice if you have a 19 size polymer 80 is that number one, these are slightly different style blocks, but the polymer 80 full size has a longer block, which is how it's able to use the exact same length guide rod as uh, standard Glocks and I believe the 47, no, excuse me, the 47 has a 19 one. Ignore everything you just heard me say almost. Go ahead and take out the barrel. Just your standard style, Glock style, hooded barrel. Like I said, it's got a little bit of a crown to it. However, I still prefer the threaded barrel that we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this recoil spring in there, see if it works. Look at that, it does. Yeah, I still think they're sprung a little bit too heavy on those. But taking a look inside here, as you can see, it's all stock style internals and very... Very decently finished, actually. Not sure of the round count, but doesn't appear to be too terrible. Taking a look at the frame. Already showed that front locking block. Pardon me, there's your drop safety. There's your slide lock slide release. Back here you have your rear block with the rails, or actually the entire pack sits in there. Uh, disconnect and your ejector. Pretty standard fare. Very light, very nice. Go ahead and flip it that way. Yes, if you wanted to just put your stock lock top onto a polymer 80 frame, you can do that, and then you'd have the best of three worlds. Or you can do like I did, put a Zeb barrel into an unknown manufacturer's slide, and then you can do that. Now, obviously, there's no firing pin, so nothing to release. However, you don't have to, and it will lock on. So I think that looks kind of cool. Let me know what you think in the comments on that. Plus, don't forget, I will be mounting an optic up here. Once I do that, it'll be good to go. One thing I noticed is this son of a gun is pushed way the hell over. So that would be getting changed. Plus, I don't like that single dot rear night sight. So I'll probably wind up changing both of these. Although not for a while because the tritium works. It kind of reminds me of the Springfield. Uh, I don't know what else I can tell you about this gun other than that looks really cool with the two-tone. And once I mount an optic on here, it will be even more successful. Yeah. What do I think of the Polymer 80 Glock Gen 3 clone? I think it's kind of cool. I think it's really neat. I think it will be successful because it already has been. And I think I will enjoy shooting it. And I will be testing this since it is now an optics-ready version of the gun. So, don't know why I took it apart. Let's go ahead and put it back together for now because I don't need to be shooting this one. You can tell good fit and finish when you can just slide stuff together. But anywho, if you like this video, don't forget to comment down below. Oh yeah, if you want to blow out your stock slide and stuff, go ahead and do this. Put the uh, ported barrel in there. We're not going to do that though. We're just going to put its original barrel back in there. So, anywho, that's it. That's it for me. If you like this video, don't forget to like it, subscribe, share it, super thanks, all that stuff. If you decide to become a channel member, that would be awesome because it would allow you to help me grow the channel organically and then I don't have to sell t-shirts although if you would buy a t-shirt let me know down below because I may work on that as well so come back for the next video where we will be talking about the Springfield Prodigy and taking a look at a buddies and we will see what we think so come back for that I love you guys and as always I'll talk to you later